Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now recently on my channel I've been going through a little mini series with the Mantis X10 Elite. This is a diagnostic and training tool that I've been really getting into with my first video part one. It was more of an unboxing, getting used to the system, kind of figuring things out in part two, getting into the dry fire, going through the menus and starting to really understand what the system could do for me. But today in part three, while I can tell you getting into live fire, I have learned so much about what I've been doing, what I've been doing wrong and what I need to do to correct my shot. It has been absolutely fantastic getting into this Mantis X10 Elite and that's what today's video is all about. And so what I can tell you for sure is that I've made some significant corrections to my shooting on pistol in less than 200 rounds of nine millimeter. That has been absolutely instrumental in my thought process, in my understanding, and the little things in the nuances that I would have never been able to really pick up on if it wasn't for this device. Now, don't get me wrong, this absolutely does not take the place of formal training, yet I can say even if you had formal training, the things that you can learn from this diagnostic tool, I can guarantee you, you wouldn't completely pick up on even with a seasoned trainer. Now, again, I'm not gonna say that this takes the place of training, but it's an absolute enhancement to your training regimen. And again, that's what we're gonna get into. And so with that, when we get back, I'm gonna get into my footage beginning to end so you can see how it's worked for me. And with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Mantis who did provide this for review. And so now as we get into the live fire application with the Mantis X10 Elite. Now keep in mind, this is going to be a little bit of an iteration. I'm going to move through a progression, start with fairly close up shooting and then progress towards further and further distances as time goes on. And in addition to that, the entire time shooting nine millimeter pistol. Now keep in mind the fact that at this point, I am shooting a brand new handgun. This is actually my first time at the range. So I'm getting my first few reps in, first 20 shots without the sensor. This is gonna allow me just to get kind of a little bit of a rhythm, start to get some feel, and then just a little bit of a benchmark so that when I start to introduce the sensor, I kind of have something to compare against. So again, I'm gonna be shooting 10 round magazines and looking to shoot about 20 shots per round. So here at seven yards, you can see without the sensor, not too bad. Couple, I'm pulling a little bit. One of them, I just lost it. I don't know what happened. Wasn't paying close enough attention, but not too bad. So that's the first 20 rounds without the sensor. So now for my next 20 shots, I do now at this point have the sensor running. And the interesting thing, pay attention to the graph. So the blue represents the time while I'm aiming. The yellow represents the time while I'm pulling the trigger. The X represents the break and the red is my muzzle rise. And you can see it does a fantastic job tracking. Now I did my absolute best to try to line some things up so you can see it. And here you can see as I'm moving the subtleties in my muzzle as I'm aiming, the subtleties as I'm pulling back the trigger and bang, you can see. And even though it looks like the muzzle rises up, the initial muzzle direction actually is down. That's an indication that I'm anticipating the recoil and the Mantis X10 Elite really starting to show the trends. So absolutely fantastic what you can learn. And this is a really cool analysis tool. So as I go through 20 shots with the Mantis running and tracking, I am absolutely starting to get an understanding of what's going on. Now the key with all of this, is I can keep an eye on this real time. I can really get an understanding of what's going on, do a little bit of analysis while I'm shooting and start to understand my trends. And so each shot is analyzed and independently scored 
and then all of the independent shots in each round are tallied and put into an average. So I'm doing what's called the open training, and as soon as I start, it starts to track my shots. And when I hit stop, well, it stops and averages everything out. So you'll notice again, doing 10 or 20 round groupings, and at this point, very much learning about my tendencies. So this isn't exactly perfect, and it absolutely does not take the place of an actual trainer, but it's an excellent tool while you're out at the range to try to understand your tendencies and start to make some corrections. And that's exactly what I'm doing here today with the live fire on the X10 Elite. So here I am at the range already seeing, you know, obviously low and left. So I'm real time able to see this in my diagnostics. Now that's regardless of where my shot is hitting, but at this point, after those 20 shots, can I make the correction? That's going to be the question. I see it happening in front of me. Now I need to make the adjustment. And so clearly, I'm a little bit low and a little bit left. I'm tightening my fingers a little bit too much, maybe slapping at the trigger. Maybe I have too little trigger finger, or maybe I'm pushing forward. Again, only time will tell. And kind of dancing between shooting with the sensor off and then back on gives me a little bit of a benchmark and something to track against. So at 10 yards, you can see with the sensor off, not too bad. I mean, I definitely tried, but just wasn't able to see anything or make any adjustments just yet. So I'm going to mark these and then we'll do the next set. And so at this point, I'm really starting to pay closer attention to my aim, trying not to grip too tight or push forward or anticipate the recoil. This is really an opportunity for me to monitor as I shoot. And you can see, and just slow down, glancing down every now and then, and stay still. I'm moving too much. Taking my time, paying attention, trying to get it right. Now that I have the ability to monitor, it's gonna allow me to make some adjustments. So again, not perfect and not replacing a trainer, but it's giving me something to benchmark against. And so all the ones with slashes were from the prior round. And this time you can see, although not perfect, it did force me to slow down and really observe my shots. And you can see almost, almost all 10 shots stacked right on top of the, you know, same exact area with the one exception being I lost one a little bit high, but everything is just slightly left of center mass. At 10 yards, that to me is solid. And I definitely made a nice adjustment from spreading to tightening up. It made me focus, slow down, and really pay attention having the sensor. So that's a subtle benefit I'd say so far. And so at this point, round seven and eight, I'm really focused on making adjustments. I need to move far less. I need to be more critical with my aim. I really need to smooth everything out. So smoothing out my trigger squeeze, shooting at a regular pace, really trying to pay attention to the details. Now that I have something to kind of benchmark and measure against, I'm starting to get a rhythm. I'm starting to understand what it is I'm doing wrong. And again, even without a trainer here, I am really able to kind of pick things apart, understand and diagnose. And even at times I am speeding up and increasing my rate of fire. This was mostly out of a matter of interest to see what would happen. I was kind of curious if I speed up, what will it do to my score? What are my tendencies? What does it mean? And how do I correct? Now here round number nine, Without the sensor, speeding up as much as I can. I don't usually shoot that quick, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I seem to have lost a couple. I feel like that's one of them because I don't think that was from my prior round. So that's nine, either here or here, probably that one, 10. So not too bad, but now with the sensor, and I was still trying to go fairly quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pretty darn close. And I mean, considering, you know, that is less than six inches. 
going fairly quick and at 10 yards, I'm fairly happy, but what do the diagnostics say? And so I'm not overly surprised that I'm slapping at the trigger. I'm not overly surprised that I'm pushing the muzzle down. I'm not overly surprised at these results. When I speed up, of course, things are gonna get a little bit out of whack when I'm not so smooth, when I'm not paying attention to all of the details. That is not a surprise. But over time, as I continue to work on my slow repetitions and gain the muscle memory, I know that's gonna come out in my speed. So I'm not overly bummed out about it. I just realized that slapping the trigger and moving faster is something that's gonna happen, and this shows me. That's the key. It shows me exactly what's happening, and that is absolutely fantastic. So backing off a little bit now, focusing much more on my technique, slowing down, and actually focusing a little bit on trigger depth. At this point, you've noticed most of my shooting low and left. I'm trying to really diagnose it and straighten things out. So trigger finger depth is one thing that can absolutely impact your aim and bring it low and to the left. So as I try to push myself to the right, again, trying to get a little more depth on my trigger finger, see if I can start to pull that shot a little bit right. Now I tried dipping my fingers a little bit deeper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know if that's one. Let's try that again. One, two. Uh, that's actually maybe two right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So not too bad. That's without the sensor. Let's go with it. So I had marked everything from round 11 with Sharpie. Round 12, so one, two, three. Actually, did I count that one? That's a nice shot. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know. I'm dancing. Oh, but still seemingly a little bit left, but I did make some adjustments. I feel like a little more trigger finger might be good for me. So I'm going to try to continue to dip my finger just a little bit further, get it a little bit deeper, and hopefully that helps out. But not bad. At least I'm like almost entirely on the paper and generally in about a six inch sort of cluster, losing a couple of them, but not too bad. And again, that's at 50 feet. So now at this point, I'm stepping out of the pistol bay and more into the rifle range, going out to 25 yards. Now I figure anything I'm doing is going to be amplified at distance. If I'm having problems at short distance, it will be amplified at long distance. And so really trying to go slow, take my time, focus, and think about the fundamentals that I'm learning, this will be instrumental in demonstrating what I can do. So first, going with no sensor, Trying to kind of figure it out. 25 yards, not great. Started awesome. Had a couple that I sort of lost. So six out of 10, I would say are reasonable going for the center mass. So I'm gonna mark those and then we'll get the sensor. And now with the sensor, can I straighten things out? Can I tighten up my group? What can I learn? I really do like the idea that with ease, you can actually leave the X10 Elite sensor running but just don't hit start on the app and it's not going to track. So no problem. And I found that this has more than enough battery life to run an entire range session. No problem. The fact that it's USB rechargeable is awesome. It doesn't seem to add too much in the way of weight on the front of the muzzle. And if anything, it just performs. This unit has been great. It's been absolutely fantastic. And again, really helping me understand what I'm doing. So slowing down, taking my time, thinking about all the lessons that I've been learning and trying to apply them out to 25 yards. And so as I get into this, I had already marked the last round, but here, let's start at the top. One, two, three, and that's all I have on the outside. Now I'm at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Vast improvement. That's trigger squeeze, how smooth I am, 
and just taking my time as I pull the trigger in just so smooth that I definitely felt that's a huge improvement and hopefully something I can continue to gain on. So here you can see a little bit real time what's going on. You can see that the sensor, every single shot is reporting my score and all of these averaging out to the total average for the round. And again, this has all been the open practice. And there are so many other drills that I'll be able to use. But this for me has been a great place to start. You'll see if you go back to the beginning of my footage, everything low, everything left. But at this point, working out all the little things that I've learned in a very short amount of time, trying to straighten things out, trying to get it working in the right direction. And the Mantis X10 Elite has absolutely given me the tools I need at a glimpse to be able to do that. Not too bad, a little high now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, I take that one back, so that's nine. There's a tenth one in here somewhere. But anyway, not too bad. Now you'll notice I'm far less to the left. I'm making my corrections. I'm finding my sweet spot. I'm definitely more centered on my, call it windage, that's a big improvement. So let's try it again on the number one. And so again, in less than 200 rounds, I have gone from pulling everything low and left, yanking at the trigger, maybe not enough trigger finger, maybe I'm anticipating too much recoil. I have gone from a lot of, I would say, and they seem like minor deficiencies, but they're actually major deficiencies in the grand scheme of things to at least understanding it, to at least being able to diagnose it, and to at least be able to say, I can work on this, I can improve. And without too much training, without too much time, and without too much difficulty, on the range, in front of me, real time, I was able to make the adjustments and really fine tune what I was doing. And this is just the start. There is so much more to go with the X10 Elite, but already I am absolutely pumped. So round 16 here, pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe that's 10, not too sure, but damn. All right, so still touch left butt. I mean, that's pretty darn good. I'm happy with that, perfect. Pretty darn close, and I mean, all things considered, I mean, look at the size of that group. I mean, I'm fairly happy with that, and that's certainly respectable results. So again, going nice and smooth on my trigger, and let's take a look at the diagnostics. And so, all right, guys, there you have it, a look at the Mantis X10 Elite in the live fire scenario. Awesome. I'm pumped. I'm really, really happy with this for a number of reasons. I have absolutely learned a huge amount about what I've been doing wrong. And it's the subtle things. It's not like it's crazy far off where I've been, but it's the subtle things and it's the intangibles. But the reality is I was moving a lot. My finger really position and the overall pull not quite right. And even with basic understanding and looking at the diagnostics, comparing that to where my actual shots are hitting on the target, I've been able to correlate a lot of these things and really make super fast enhancement. If it wasn't for the fact that I shot this video and took more time to do it, I would have learned all of that in less than an hour, less than 200 rounds, and I've really made an advancement mentally. Now I know what to look for, now I know what to focus on, and the X10 Elite absolutely did that for me. So moving forward, more dry fire, more live fire, getting into all the different training regiments within the software, learning more, taking my time, trying to understand my fundamentals and really breaking it down, taking my time, getting it right, and practice, practice, practice. Repetition, doing it over and over again, that's what I think this can do for me, 
but definitely for you. And much, much more to come. In the future, I'll be getting into rifle, shotgun, and maybe even archery. We'll see what happens. It just depends if this can fit all of my equipment. And so again, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Mantis who did provide this for review. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more on my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it. So from sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, backpacks, flashlights, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.